Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bank I was with, I, I was with Blue Boy before I came out here. You feel me? Yeah. And Blue was like, he said something that that shocked my world, bro. He said, "Man, I'm 50 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a. F I could go back to jail. You know what I'm saying? I could I could go back in there. I'm good. You know what I mean? When he said that, bro, I didn't even. Only, I, what the fuck can I tell him? But wow. that shit just shocked me. Like I'm wow. like, damn, bro. Like, damn. You know, like, like he just said some other shit. You know what I mean? I can't die in prison. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, yeah, ooh, yeah. I love you, bro. But. <laughs> As a young kid, I was really, I was, I was a monster as a young kid, and I was always in institutions since I was 11 years old. And when I was 12 years old, I had the opportunity to meet my friend. Blue Boy. Where did you meet? In Spofford Institution. Oh, you met in Spofford? was in Spofford in the Bronx. I was around nine years old, and I was in a reform school in the Bronx. It's located in the Bronx, and it's called Spofford. And um, one day, um, we went there, and we saw a movie, and the movie was the greatest. I believe it was 77, 76, the movie appeared. And um, after the movie played, um, Muhammad Ali walked in. And I was just flabbergasted just to look at the champ. It was just, um, and after that day, I said, wow, I'm going to be just like this man. You know what I mean? And I don't know, um, it's just he just gave me inspiration to accomplish something, to have a goal. He just gave me a goal and just. You always got people that don't, you always, you always got somebody that tries to guide you into a better direction. And you got some people that's always going to guide you into a negative direction. You know what I'm saying? But I was always. Involved with the negativity because I wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? At that time, I wanted to be around certain people, and I got caught up in that lifestyle of being in gangs. You know what I'm saying? I was in a gang when I was younger, and I got caught up in that whole scene of drugs and the drug war and all that stuff. During one of Mike Tyson's many early run ins with the law, he would be sent to the Gladiator School for Boys, Spofford, in the Bronx the jungle of youth detention centers. One day while there, they gathered all the boys to watch a flick called The Greatest, a 1977 documentary film about Muhammad Ali's life produced by Columbia Pictures. And just as the credits started to roll on the film, The Greatest himself would walk in. Seeing the champ up close, this moment would have a profound effect on Mike inspiring him to go on and do great things. But for another nine-year-old that he would later cross paths with that was sent to the same institution, no such inspiration would come and he would continue on his path of destruction. And there is a lesson to be learned from it. This is the story of Louis Blue Boy Rosado. You know, I wasn't really there for most of the time. I was either in the group homes or locked up in a facility upstate somewhere, you know? Yeah, so they sent me away to Spofford because my mom, at the time, she wasn't there when they brought me home. When the police brought me home, they was, she wasn't there, so they had to leave me with somebody, and I didn't have nobody, I, I, I didn't know their address like that. I could walk you there, but I couldn't, I didn't know the building, nothing like that. I could walk you there, but, so they had to take me to Spofford. And that was a whole beginning of the wax of being, you know, getting caught up in the lifestyle, you know. With Blue Boy's father doing federal and state time for violent acts, including murder, and his mother also spending time incarcerated, sometimes it's deeper than the family that you grow up in. While there are many individuals that manage to overcome the obstacles of a broken home, adding in the gang 
and drug-ridden neighborhood into the mix. Sometimes both is just too much to overcome. So you grew up in the Lower East Side? Lower East Side on the H Street Avenue D. Okay, what were the 70s and 80s like in the oh. LES? That was bad. <laughs> There's more heroin being sold in the streets of New York than ever before. The Lower East Side has gone from push carts to pushers. The dealers are out there hawking their wares. Heroin at $10 a bag. So we came down the street I was offered at least four brands of heroin, something called red tape, yellow tape, stars, as well as the works, the hypodermic syringe to inject it. Is it like that here all the time? I was drunk central. That was the capital of heroin. You had the back then, you had the Black Sunday, you had executive, toilet, poison, Coke 45, checkmate. Not many landlords here that own, that have significant holdings of property. They might own 10, 15. Some landlords own 40 buildings. What they do is, is that they continue to collect the rent. They don't pay city taxes. Eventually, they don't provide services to the building, so they don't provide heat, they don't provide repair services. They have, it's not unusual for a building to have several hundred violations. So the landlords will let these buildings decline. Once the tenants have moved out of the building, which takes three, four, five years, they then hire arsons to burn them, and then they collect the insurance and they disappear. The other thing is, is that government support programs, for example... New York City and the Lower East Sider is the bottom half of the Big Apple. It's a crazy life that we live here on the Lower East Sider. Maybe it's because we don't know any other crazy life but this one, you dig? Yes. Because this life is real. They got everything. Yeah, old mobile. Got belly though, yeah, he got a piece of it and everything. Check it out. One hundred and eight Oldsmobile cat and sign. Is he parking it? I don't want that one. He go with you to peace and everything. Check it out. Everything. No, it's not hot. You go over there and talk to the guy. What do you think? Do you think it's hot? No, it's not hot because I know the guy. It's legal. Jesus Christ. My name is Tyrone and I live here. And I would like for you to walk these mean streets with me. The Low East Sider is sometimes known as the ghetto supermarket. Where street hustling is a way of survival, a way of life. After catching his first charge for pushing his teacher down the stairs at the age of nine and catching his first body before he could buy six, during the course of what would eventually turn out to be a 39-year jail stint and catching two more bodies along the way, miraculously, Blue Boy would get a blessing from the parole board in 2022. But when you come home and shake the world, but most of the people that know you and can congratulate you on all the success are behind the wall, what do you do? Damn, bro, Blue Boy, man. Blue Boy did so much time in the can, bro. He was a legend. He he was, yo, he was the only crip. <laughs> He wasn't even Crip. He from Lower East Side. So yeah. when I say I'm from Brooklyn, I was born in Brooklyn, but I'm also from Lower East Side. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I was born, in, I was raised in Lower East Side. You know what I'm saying? Like Lower East Side is where Chinatown is at. Uh -huh. So like, you know, I have affinity with, with Blue Boy and the whole Lower East Side. Shout out to Lower East Side, Lower Deck. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Blue Boy, he wasn't even really Crip. He, but he's seen all the bloods in the state like, okay, I, well, I'm crit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know. While no, being locked up. While being locked up. Yeah. He ain't not know one crip. 
He ain't know no lessons, no nothing. I don't know what he just he just came out the side like, oh y'all blood. Well I'm Crip, <laughs> mad loud like I'm Crip. What's up? Like you know what I'm saying everybody's just like I don't know. Like mm -hmm. like, like you know he was really about that. Like he had people's like hearts in his pockets. Like you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. like all the people that. People thought was like about it. He like he he put their hearts in they in his pocket. He was really mm -hmm. that guy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um um and you know he came home and and uh what happened was from my knowledge is you know he was working at a uh he was working at a dispensary down there in Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I guess somebody came in there doing some whatever shit. And you know I I. I, I assume Or I, that's what I heard That he disarmed the dude And clapped him And killed him You know what I'm saying Or I mean I don't know If he killed him No not killed him But he uh, uh He he clapped him You know what I'm saying He yeah. got shot him So now he back in He back in the uh, Rikers Island Fighting a, a Attempted murder charge You know what I mean Institutionalized Established In a practice Or custom Established As part Of an official Organization or apathetic and dependent after a long period in the institution. I'm not a psychologist, so I'm not going to be able to say if this was the case or the situation surrounding Blue Boy's most recent arrest, but I'm definitely going to say a case could be made for it. In October 2022, just 11 months from being released from nearly four decades behind bars, Blue Boy would find himself back in familiar surroundings. On October 21st, 2002, he would be involved in a shooting outside of a quote, end quote, legal marijuana shop on St. Mark's Place in the East Village area of Manhattan. So according to court documents and eyewitness accounts, Blue Boy would get in a heated altercation with a 25 year old outside of the shop. Now, conflicting accounts would occur here, but what's not disputed is that the altercation would escalate rapidly, leading to a firearm being produced and the 25-year-old man being shot by Blue Boy. The victim would only be identified as a 25-year-old male. He would be struck and suffer serious injuries and transported to a nearby hospital for treatment. Blue Boy would eventually be arrested for the shooting and charged with attempted murder, attempted assault, as well as gun possession. Three months later, on January 3rd, 2023, Blue Boy would be arraigned on those charges and held without bail, pending further court appearances. As reported by the New York Post, he would later be supposedly convicted and sentenced to an alleged 12 years in prison for the shooting. This incident would not only reignite his legal troubles, but according to him via an article he would give to the New York Post, it would have a profound impact on his efforts to re-enter society and rebuild his life. He would tell the paper that he had been working on a book deal with an author by the name of Clayton Patterson, as well as a documentary film project with a filmmaker by the name of Max Starr. And after doing interviews on some of the biggest platforms, you would have to think that he was looking to cash in on his past. But with him explaining in one of his many interviews how hard it was just to come out of solitary for a time and see several inmates coming his way without thinking it was a situation. Could you imagine how hard it was on the streets? But besides that, though he was doing these interviews, on these big platforms and he might have even been recognized walking the streets in certain areas you have to think that he thought that the people that probably really cared about his success or even really knew who he was was behind the wall and there was only one way to fully get those accolades i learned this a long time ago from my uncles and some of my cousins that some people are just more comfortable in the jungle and very early on I got used to only seeing them every other couple of summers but y'all let me know what y'all thinking 
or let me know what y'all think the play was on this situation. Make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so you know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Definitely tap in directly Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until our next slide, it's your ace pop a lot. Salute the almighty mob.